Hello everybody, how you doing? Thank you for logging on. I was gonna say tuning in, but we're not television, but thank you for logging on uh, MD Monthly Facebook page. It's a little bit different as far as time schedule. We usually have it at 8.30 a.m. in the morning, but I thought we'd change it up and do it in the evening while everybody's at home, maybe having a late dinner or uh, just relaxing after a long day's work. But um, we've been promoting these types of live stream segments uh, almost on a weekly basis. And uh, they become very popular to where people have been asking to uh, engage more as far as Q&As, questions, and what have you. So I'm here at Practical Approach Pediatric. I'm saying it's a very long name. Go ahead. Practical Approach Pediatrics, Pediatric Dentistry, and Pediatric Urgent Care. And Pediatric Urgent Care. Yes, sir. Okay. Because my dyslexia kicks in and I'll switch <laughs> everything all around. So... Um, it's a little informal. I have Jesse in the background, Salo, who's doing the production as well. Any, please, we invite you to ask any questions possible when it comes to uh, pediatric dentistry and pediatrician. If you have questions about what's going on with your children, future children, everything else, uh, we're here to answer that. But um, first of all, I want to thank you guys for giving me the time after a long day's work uh, this okay. evening. I know you guys are busy. Uh, I've seen it and uh, firsthand because um, I'm a little bit biased because I'll be honest with you um, my daughter is at my daughter actually comes here as well so I've gotten to know them very well so I trust them with uh, my heart and uh, they take care of my heart very well so thank you so much guys thank you thank you for thank having us so I hear I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's not a Mexican accent right no <laughs> no. no oh well my Mexican heritage so if you want to say Aditona you say Doctora Adetona, <laughs> Mexican. No, actually, we're Nigerians. Uh, we Nigerian. come from the west coast of Africa. Um, we relocated here about uh, 19, years, 19 ago. years ago. And we've been here ever since. We lived uh, a little bit in Houston, about four years, and then made San Antonio home. And San Antonio has been very good to us. How long have you been San Antonio again? About uh, 15, years. 15 years. 15 years. Yes, sir. So I have my phone here. I'll be going back and forth. People will be making comments and asking okay. questions. So it's not, I'm not dozing off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not texting anybody. I am Facebooking, but it's I'm actually watching us. And yeah, y'all look good on screen. Oh man, thank that you. Want to make up? Uh huh. Where, where did y'all meet? Uh, how do how do you become? How do you find your queen with a similar? Age, well, obviously a same age group, and then y'all. It was it was this uh, as far as your patience is concerned? Was this planned, pre-planned? Did y'all say, "Well, we're gonna"? It, it was an arranged marriage. No, I'm no. just kidding. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't pre-planned. You know, he's always wanted to be a pediatrician, okay. and I always wanted to be an architect. So really, things just took. It was meant to be. Let's put mm -hmm. it that way. However, I'm glad it did because I wouldn't have chosen a different life for us. Oh, cool. yeah, yeah. So we truly enjoyed and we've been working together for the past 21 years, mm -hmm. even before we got married. So mm -hmm. doing this together right now is really not anything new or we mm -hmm. have to work at. So I like that. And yeah. we do share the same vision, working towards the same goal. Yes. So it's it's life's been good. Yeah. I wish I could show everybody this place. This is yeah. probably over 7,000 square feet. It's an independent building right up of a uh, Huebner in the medical center. Did you have influence in the architectural side of things? Is, I mean, since that was what was your passion? Yes, sir. Uh, you see, this was designed by us. Um, okay. The um, architectural. Uh, drawings we had a lot of input in it and as a matter of fact if we go back to um, um, the year 2000 and uh, um, 2001 mm -hmm. um, my wife actually had a drawing of what our, our practice was going to look like you know and so when we were designing this place after we had submitted the architectural um, drawings we, we stumbled upon that picture you know what a diary is, right? It was a pencil right? sketch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you okay. know what a diary is, yes, right? Yes, That's yes. the booklet of, mm -hmm. you know, not digital. So she said, we stopped. <laughs> and, you know, yeah, that ages us, but it's okay. <laughs> we stumbled upon it and it looked eerily similar. Really? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And the name Practical Approach was actually registered in Bear, um, in um, Harris County, County in, in Houston. Houston. Oh, Houston. So that's the vision we had. We knew where we were going. We knew what we wanted. 
and it's just been one step after the other, even mm -hmm. when it looked very bleak, mm -hmm. you know, we just so stayed on. It's mm -hmm. been a 12-year vision mm -hmm. that came into reality six years ago. Yes. So. And that's about the same time I met you guys. Yes. Well, exactly. Uh, this side of the building wasn't finished out yeah, yet. This was a shell. We were on the other side, and mm -hmm. uh, we've been friends outside of business as right. well too. And um, it's a great place. So it's a great place to just come watch and check it out and see their I engagement with their children. How much time y'all take to actually know get to know the child, and um, as you did with my daughter as well too. Uh, tell me a little bit more as far as what is the protocol. What what do people do when they come in? I mean. Uh, they're coming in to see you first, or for you for how, how does that work? Well, it's, it's almost like a one-stop shop. It's it a, is. A, it is a one-stop shop. Okay. And um, it took us a couple of years to get it down to where it works perfectly. It okay. was a trial and error. But when the patients come in, it's one practice, and that's what we try to help our patients and families understand. It's one practice. Mm -hmm. So you register. Um, your child and okay. you just decide if you want medical care or dental care and if at any time in the future you choose to utilize the other services mm -hmm. you just make an appointment for it. Your child is already registered and besides the specific paperwork for the mm -hmm. service there's really no extra paperwork. Mm -hmm. um, you get the same appointment notices as well. As far as the um, health care itself when you come to the office, let's assume you come to the office for both a medical visit and a dental visit, mm -hmm. we've narrowed it down to make the visit efficient Okay. to where the dental and the medical visit are happening simultaneously. Okay. So. Yeah. Because this is a very busy world. Parents yes. are more busier. Correct. Yes. Getting more busier in the future as well, too. So to accommodate, mm -hmm. they can set up one appointment and both. Um, make and do both services. Okay. So it takes a little longer, but you don't have to take an extra day off of work. Mm -hmm. You don't the travel time from going between offices, you know. So we did not have a model to fashion mm -hmm. it after. So we're kind of we're we're pioneers. Okay. So I'm assuming you're the first. We're the first. Okay. okay. Right. Okay. And we're still the only ones in the state of Texas, as far as we know. As far All as the, okay. Yeah, as far as the last time I checked, which was before we started the program. Uh huh. Now there are offices and practices that have the two specialties in the same building. Okay. But what not building? one that integrates. Yeah. But they're separate, like, yeah, yes. they're separate offices. separate offices. They, you know, they may be husband and wife, but the pra the practices are separate. Mm -hmm. Unlike ours, when you come in, you're registered just once. You okay. fill out one registration paper, and that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're fully digital, so all of the paperwork that we have in house mm -hmm. is full, very available to the pay to the parents on our portal. Okay. We have an app, we're the only practice, private practice that has an app. Okay. So all of the um, registration papers, um, developmental questionnaires that mm -hmm. they have to answer, they can do all of that at home before even stepping foot in the practice. Mm -hmm. And they hit submit, that comes straight to us, we can review it, and then they come in, they just digitally sign in. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we, it makes we it strongly faster. Recommend we strongly, strongly recommend, strongly recommend it. that. But um, we have a few of our parents moving towards that, doing that. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it's it's very available. They can communicate with us on the app, you know. So they don't even have to call the office. Mm -hmm. They can just make an appointment on there, send a message, and somebody in the office is always on there responding to them, making things faster. If they want forms filled out, they scan it and send it. Okay. And then we we take care of it and send it back it's you know so it's, it's yeah so um as a as a newborn or even someone who has who is a first time father or mother mm -hmm. <clears throat> what is is there a difference in age to see the child first do they see you first and then at what age group can they do they come to the dentist or how does that work out well as newborns they will see the physician first okay um what we do as per the dental aspect of it, we wait till the parents have a few months to settle into the new baby in their life and mm -hmm. all the daily routines of their life. So usually at two months, when the babies come for their two month well child check, we introduce them to mm -hmm. oral health care. Okay. And that's when we start 
given them all the recommendations they need to know for that time of their life and um, we you know a lot of parents ask us well why do we have to do this now they don't have teeth but a lot of the habits that cause dental problems in the future mm -hmm. start now when they don't have teeth so we just try and encourage them not to start habits that would be harmful in the future so know. at two months old we wow. give them this complimentary awareness talk and we actually do offer the dental services to our families up until age one uh -huh. complimentary so if they have any questions or concerns about anything dentally going on we will do um, complimentary consultations with the family it's good to know and as a quick caveat to what she just mentioned mm -hmm. since we started the practice back in 2011 right all of the patients that were born into the practice right none of them from zero to um, about six years of age now none of them have come with caries that have stuck with us because of what we've been doing and we've been tracking them so they come for preventive care and preventive care is mm -hmm. best it's really mm -hmm. the most important thing when it comes mm -hmm. to dental health very informative i love the passion and talking to you guys because it's uh it, even though it's your career but i mean it doesn't feel like work when and i know you're dedicated <laughs> yeah. and for a fact um, I believe we have some questions online. I got Jesse here giving me a signal. Jesse, can you let me know what, or give me the name who's asking and what the question is? Kelsey says, what is your stance on vaccinations at the clinic? Can parents decide on which they want? All right. So, hi, Jesse. Um, so, it, the, um, first of all, let's get this out there in the open. The American Association of Pediatricians and the CDC recommends that all kids be vaccinated. But then again, you look at it, I'm not the parent of your child. I have two of mine whom I can decide for, right? So our, our goal at the practice is to give you information, pros and cons, okay? And most parents come with um, a lot of questions. They come with a lot of um, um, preconceived ideas. and. Ours is not to be judgmental. We want to understand where you're coming from and hopefully be able to help you see the benefits of vaccines. But if you still choose not to vaccinate, we will accommodate you for the single reason this, because we do not want to be part of the problem. We don't want to raise another generation who do not consider preventive care important in their lives. We'll only go to the doctor for when they're sick or when something is terribly wrong. So in that office, we'll work with you. And um, you know, one of the things that one of my mentors usually uh, told me when uh, you know, in my early days uh, as a physician is that you know, if you get some, that's better than none. So, and I still hold on to that. I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much, it's very detailed. Do we have any, I believe we have more questions coming in. Uh, what do you do with the rowdy ones for dental care? Anesthesia, <laughs> holistic approach such as hypnosis? You know what? <laughs> I get asked that a lot. How do you do what you do with the crying kids? Now, first of all, I strongly recommend that you start getting dental checkups by the time they're one. It's within six, year, six months of their first baby teeth or by age one, whichever one comes first. And that's the academy's recommendation. Typically, the kids would cry, you know, mm -hmm. fuss between ages um, one to three. But once they start school or at least start understanding what's going on, they become cooperative. So as long as, um, as, long as the kids come in on a regular basis, which we call happy visits, most of the time they tend to understand what's going on a little bit. However, if we do have to perform um, any kind of dental treatment, there's so many things that go into play when we're deciding what we do. However, at our office, we do do light sedations like laughing gas, oral sedations, and every now and then we'll do general anesthesia to get the dental work done. However, we do discuss with the parents, find out what the family's special situation is, what your needs are, and um, fashion some kind of treatment that best suits your family. So, you know, it's a little bit, um, 
it is individual care and you'll be surprised at what a lot of your kids can um, put up with if we do a lot of distraction technique. So, you know, I would encourage you to discuss that more at the dental visits and the dentist can always come up with um, something to suit your family needs. Thank you for asking that question. I get that yeah, asked, I get asked a lot. Hey, oh, people. Jessica Taylor, thank you so much, Jessica, for engaging and asking these particular questions. Uh, I'm looking at my phone right now. We have Amanda Gonzalez, and I'm not sure if I pronounce this right, but do you, do you use uh, am Amalgam? Amalgam. Uh, amalgam, okay. Yes. And uh, what are your thoughts about it? Well, amalgam is safe. We do have a lot of questions about amalgam and a lot of concerns about amalgam. However, it's still considered the gold standard of restorative dentistry. But in pediatrics, we're able to use, in, in dentistry in general, we're also able to use the resins, you know, which are the white fillings, you know. Um, depending again on the specific situation, amalgam might be the best treatment of choice. However, at our office, we will go over the pros and the cons and why one's better than the other, mm -hmm. what our recommendations are, and what's still okay to mm -hmm. do. So if it's an option, we'll still give it to you an, mm -hmm. as an option and have you decide what you prefer. I like that. Mm -hmm. So the parent, I mean, it's you, you communicate with the parent efficiently, oh, understanding where they're coming from as well. In other words, you're listening to them. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it's very important. So one of the things that we pride ourselves with in the practice, and it takes time to build, mm -hmm. it's trust, mm -hmm. okay? Trust doesn't happen de novo. It takes two to tango. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So when you first come to the office, we introduce you to what we do, right? And then we try to get to know you so that you can get to know us. The more comfortable we feel with one another, the better the mm -hmm. care we can give to your child, mm -hmm. right? I usually tell this to my parents. I say, I've got an MD behind my name but it doesn't say G-O-D, mm -hmm. I'm not God. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm -hmm. that says it all right there. Yes. I can help you with your child, but I'm not God. I don't make those decisions for mm -hmm. you. I give you pros and cons, we help you out. And then we, we relate with the child. So sometimes when, you know, when they get to a certain age, we start directing our talks with the child. Mm -hmm. And I quickly tell parents that, you know, we're not ignoring you, but your child now is to a certain age where you know the the conversation is a little different mm -hmm. okay you're still involved in their care but now we have to now start giving them a little bit of yeah. an autonomy with you guiding them i like that you know, so. Mm -hmm. so we got questions coming in we got wendy ask you uh -huh. wants to ask you uh -huh. dun, dun. i'm sure you hear that all the time wendy <laughs> Uh, do you offer alternative vaccine schedules? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of my pregnant moms would mm -hmm. like this option. Dr. Askew is asking. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Wendy. Um, you know, we about five to ten percent of our practice is, is made up of our, um, you want to call them natural parents, you want to call them alternative um, vaccine, um, you know, okay. families. It doesn't. It really doesn't matter. It just means that they want to have some um, um, say in what happens with their child, and you know you can't fault any parent for wanting that. Okay, as long as we all have an understanding of you know why we're making decisions, what the pros and cons are, then it helps out. We have alternative vaccine schedule. The regular schedule is the one by the CDC. We have one that we formulated here in the practice, which is a little different from the um, um, CDC schedule. We, you come once a month to get the vaccines. And then we have the Dr. Sears schedule, which is one of the very popular schedules around the country. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> okay. Do we have another question, No, Justin? we have a lot. Richard says, do you perform any surgical procedures in the office on the medical side? Yes, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Richard. Um, so I also, you know, I have, um, my, my background is also in uh, pediatric emergency care. So we do circumcision in-house, we do uh, repair of lacerations, we take out ingrown toenails, we do um, excision of um, small, um, small to minor um, uh, lesions. 
so it's called excisional biopsies. I'm trying not to use too much of the uh, medical terms. Mm -hmm. uh, we do incision and drainage of um, abscesses, so what you call uh, boils, uh, you know, an infection or MRSA, as most of my parents will say, you know. Um, so those kind of things happen in here. Um, and, you know, it just depends on, and we also see, we have our own full x-ray in-house. Uh, we'll take pictures, uh, x-ray pictures of possible uh, fractures, and then we splint it um, so that you don't have to, like, rush off to the orthopedic doctor, like, immediately because we can splint in here. And so the, we, the splint allows for the swelling to come down. Okay, and then by that time, if you need a referral, then would we'll refer you to an orthopedic doctor who would now see the child, reevaluate the, the, the fracture, and then cast it. I hope that uh, you know answers Very detailed. the questions. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions, Jesse, coming in? Patrick says, many years ago there was talk about black and white toys helping with the baby development. Is there any truth to that? I don't see black and white toys anymore. So. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Patrick. Uh, so, you know, at the early stages of development, um, the kids are uh, attracted to bright colors, okay? So, you know, it could be, it could be, it could, white is bright, it's flashy, it could be in the form of a, a light. Black, depending on, you know, if it's not dark, it's kind of like the yin-yang kind of thing. It attracts their attention. So. But nowadays, people are using brighter colors because the kids get attracted to it. Even if it's just a light, you'd be amazed when they come to the practice, they're laying on the, uh, on the um, they're like two months old or newborn babies, they're laying on the bench, on the, on the exam bench, and they're looking, they're just looking at the fluorescent light, you know, and the, more, the parents are trying to get their attention while I'm examining <laughs> them, and the child is just there like that. <laughs> so you know it's just something attractive to the to the kiddos because um at that at that stage the retinas are still forming mm -hmm. they 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 adapting to images um so that that's that's what it is well, thank you for answering that. Thanks, thanks for asking and engaging on the uh, live stream. We have uh, Robert Salas. As far as uh, hours of operation on weekends, mm -hmm. okay. uh, what are your hours of operation? So the regular practice is not open on the weekends, but the urgent care is open. And uh, Saturday and Sunday, the hours are from 2 to 10. Um, 2 to 8, rather, I'm sorry. 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, and as we get busier, then we'll be able to extend the hours. Right now, uh, because we're in new pediatric urgent care, the flow is still trickling. So there are days when we're here and we only see one or two patients um, so we just want you guys to know out there that, you know, as we see more patients, we're going to extend the hours. Uh, work is play for us. And we're the only pediatric urgent care that will do dental emergencies. Um, if you go to the ER, dental the pediatric yeah. dental emergencies, if you go to the ER, they're just going to say, well, your child's not yeah. bleeding, uh, follow up with your dentist in wow. the morning. But if you, if you did come here, we have a dentist on set, a pretty good pediatric oh, dentist yeah. about, uh, at that. Um, I'm not biased. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so y'all actually, you could have you, you have like a, a master, secret master bedroom, y'all live here? <laughs> well, you know what, we spend quite a bit of time here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, the, and the way the practice is actually um, um, designed, yeah. it allows us to be able to um, live comfortably here, mm. do what we do. And there are times when our kids actually go to school from here and they come back to school, do their homework in one of the rooms. Yeah. So this is our life. It's our baby. I love it. yes. So, I, I, you know, one of the funny things I tell parents, I say, you know, they say, oh, your kids are grown. I say, except for one. We still have one in diapers. <laughs> they go, what do you mean? What are you talking about? I thought, you know, your, your, your daughter is 17 and your son is 12. I go, yes, we have one that is still in diapers. We're still trying to grow the child. Mm -hmm. And they say, which one? I go, this one right here, mm -hmm. you know. So we spend yeah. a lot of time a here. Time. Um, this is our Maybe passion. Thinking, yes. um, this is what we love to do. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. sometimes, we, you know, it can be good and bad. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes she has to tell, you know, 
slow down a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, so. And we still have a lot of questions. Go ahead, Jesse, what else you got? Uh, Denise says, are you seeing speech delays or eye issues due to young kids watching ele their electronics like TV, phone, iPad? Okay. So, well, hi, thank you so much, Denise. Um, research has shown that um, if you let them watch more than two hours of um, electronics, be it iPad, iPhone, uh, television, anything like that. Um, and also depending on how young you start them, okay, there's some damage over time, which you're not going to see immediately. There's some damage over time as they get older, which causes a closure in their peripheral vision. Um, you know, so that's what research has shown now. Um, and you know research in medicine is always evolving. And so maybe in the next several years we're going to find out more stuff that it does. Uh, but as of right now, um, you know, uh, we want you to limit it to as little as possible. And as a matter of fact, just uh, last year, um, the Academy changed its position on, um, on um, the number of hours or the, no the, the amount of time you should allow your child to spend in front of electronics and tablets. There's some more customers coming in. There's one I may be able to answer, so I was listening earlier. Uh, when should my baby first see a dentist? I believe you said two years of age? No. Okay, by, well, good. by their first birthday. By their first birthday. But they come, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, two months that they come in. When they come in, we'll yeah. see them at two months and offer complimentary consultation okay. until age one. And that's for uh, uh, Kenyon Clack. And then we have uh, Stephen uh, Robertson, parents being, there are a lot of parents being misinformed by uh, Google stuff, Google searches and what have you. Okay, Can, you want to allude to that? So, okay, so one of the things that we do is we tell our parents that, um, you know, like we talked about trust, mm -hmm. right? And in order for you to be able to trust someone, you have to have a relationship with them, right? Great. Um, you can't stop parents from Googling and checking out stuff. Okay, because they want to, they want to check out what you're telling them. They want to see if what you're saying is is right, right? And that's okay. You, you see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? That's okay. That's totally fine. But let's communicate. Let me know what. Let's know what you're finding out. So in the case of medical, you know, if you say, "Oh, my child has a lump, so they must have a brain tumor," mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. talk to me about it before you, you know, before you go on this tangent looking for stuff. Let's discuss why, you know, Google would only give you the worst case scenario, yeah. right? As one of, I keep going back to my mentors. Mentors are very important mm -hmm. in life, in business, in Definitely. medicine, in anything. One of my mentors says that, very early on, said, half knowledge is what's going to do more damage than anything else. And the people that you're going to hurt mm -hmm. with the half knowledge are the people closest to you. So if you look at it as wow. parents, when you get half knowledge, the people that you're going to hurt the most are your kids, right? So as a parent too, you know, I want to know that what I'm telling you or what I'm doing um, is backed by medical science. Mm -hmm. So and I love this. You know, um, and that's very good advice. And this is one of the reasons why we have the Ask mm -hmm. the Experts live stream so people can engage with you guys and ask any questions they want. Uh, we have uh, Michelle Bishop, Dr. Bishop, are you affiliated with any particular hospital? Should a child need to be hospitalized for, if a child needs to be hospitalized for an illness, are you affiliated with any hospitals? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Bishop. Uh, thank you for supporting us. Well, I'm affiliated with uh, uh, Methodist Children's. That's the closest to the practice. Uh, but I also work with um, uh, a, a hospitalist group called TIPS and they would uh, see all of my kiddos in any of the hospitals within the San Antonio um, um, metropolis uh, to, to take care of them. And once the child is discharged, they actually give me a friendly phone call to tell me that, okay, this is what happened, and then they fax me the, uh, the, the uh, hospital uh, notes um, to, to review, and then they tell me when the child is gonna follow up. So we, there's that continuity of care. Great, great question. Thank you so much. Um, we have Stephen Robertson. He's asking another question as far as if uh, very few doctors are ahead of the wave on telemedicine. What is your experience? So thank you very much, Steve. 
So we're actually one of the very few pediatric offices that offers uh, uh, telemedicine. And um, you know, on our website, the parents can actually register on there. Um, it's called eVisit. Um, once, you're, once you're registered, whenever you need us, you just go on there, just make an appointment, just like you make with the regular, uh, with the regular office. And once it's your appointment time, I come into the virtual room and you know your phone will buzz or your computer will buzz that the doctor is ready to see you. And then you walk into the virtual room and then we'll high five, air high five. And, <laughs> and then you, know, you tell me all about your child. I look at the child. Um, and there's, there's, there's this cool thing. People think, okay, you know, there's very little that you can do with uh, telemedicine. There's actually a lot that you can do because in pediatrics, most of the things that we do are by observation, right? So in there, I can tell the mom, most parents have a thermometer at home. Can you take the temperature? So they give me the temperature, right? Mm -hmm. I can tell them, lift up the child's chest mm -hmm. and I can count the respirations. I can see they're having respiratory difficulties. You know, so those are very cool. And then, guess what? Mm -hmm. The child is not scared. They're in the comfort mm -hmm. of their home. And guess what? Mom is, you know, chilled out. They're actually, most of them are actually very surprised to see me on screen. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a cool tool. We, we document everything that we do. It's all HIPAA compliant. And we send, if, if prescriptions are necessary, we send that straight to your pharmacy. Convenient, state of the art. You know, um, I, you guys are so ahead of the curve when it comes to technology and keeping up with everything. And again, you, you, you can tell by the excitement, the energy when these type of questions come in. And I want to thank you so much for it. Um, how do we, 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 give them the address, the web address, how can people find you? Okay. So, um, you know, you can find us at uh, web address www.practicalapproachpediatric.com. Um, we have Facebook page. We have uh, Twitter, we have LinkedIn, we have uh, Google, uh, the Google uh, link, uh, the Google, um, what's it called again? The Google thing? Uh, website, uh, yeah, as part of your no, search. No, no, the, the Google, uh, Google Plus, thank, thank you. you, thank you, Sal. <laughs> you know, see, I'm having, uh, what's it called? Brain you have an program. app as well, so. Yeah, we have an, we app, have an app that is downloadable from yeah. um, the, um, what's it called, App Store or uh -huh. Google Play. Um, the address of the office is 9480 um, Hibner Road, Suite 400 and 410, okay? Um, we come in through the 400 um, entrance, um, and everything you do in the office is the same entrance, the same place. You can do a virtual tour of the practice on our website, um, and just walk around the practice, see, you might see me poking you while you walk around. <laughs> Okay, you know what, I'm, I know we're going past 30 minutes, but I want to ask these two, two other questions, okay? Because okay. I want to be as informative as possible. And if we didn't get your question, um, this stays live. You can continue to, or it's going to be, um, it's pre be recorded, but you continue to ask questions. The doctors will come back days after, within 24 hours or so, to continue asking, so you can still come back and engage. Mm -hmm. But uh, Vance Nelson, do you offer any kind of services to those who don't have insurance or want to avoid going through insurance? So um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great question, Vance. Um, thank you so much. So what we do, we're doing something different, a little different because of all that is going on in uh, society right now with the, with the insurance state. So we, 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 we're trying out a cash-based uh, practice where we can see um, children and their families um, on a flat fee kind of thing. Um, and it depends, you know, it's a, it's a flat fee when you, when you call us, we'll arrange something um, and you only, you will give you a number which is different from the practices number where you call, you give us your name and, 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 and um, we'll call you back and then we, t we find out the time that is convenient for you to come in and then you come in, we'll take care of your needs. Um, there's an HEB close by us we, we, where, they are, uh, where they have a prescription plan. And so we try to give you medications if medications are necessary on that plan so that it's affordable. Mm -hmm. We also offer the concierge services okay. too. Okay. So we have concierge services for um, some of our, you know, um, VIP patients, you know, mm -hmm. high, high, um, high end patients. Um, and so this is a service that they pay 
um, a, a fee annually um, and uh, we're available to them 24-7. And it's the whole service in the practice. Mm. Um, it's the pediatrics, the pediatric dentistry, the pediatric urgent care. And we're the only practice that has a concierge service that can do that. Awesome. So you have just a variety of options, a menu of yeah. things. So it's yeah. always best to go to the website, come set an appointment, mm -hmm. come talk to you guys, especially sit down for mm -hmm. their their loved ones, their children, and everything right. else. We do allergy uh, testing in here also. Okay. And then um, in the in the very in the very um, in the next coming weeks, we're going to be doing clinical research in here in the office, mm -hmm. and and it's a way to kind of stay. In, in the know of what's going mm -hmm. on. So we're going to be testing um, medications, equipment, things like that, and which our parents and our patients are, are, are very welcome to participate okay. in when we're doing those research. Well, other than that, you got comments that uh, we love you, Dr. Mr. Aww. and Mrs. Aftona from Rachel <laughs> Hernandez. Aww. You know, um, we love now, you too, Rachel. Janine Dixon, I know her. Uh, she says, <laughs> Hi, Janine. She says, Great doctors. <laughs> and um, just several people have been making good comments and what have you. Thank um, you so much. You know, are, are antibiotics in food a problem and should we watch out for that? Patrick Moore is asking that question. Are antibiotics and food a problem? Yeah, antibiotics in food. In food. In food. So, um, let me try and answer this question, this, this question as um, well as I can. Antibiotics in anything other than treating an infection that is, that is diagnosed is harmful. One, because now we're seeing all that effect of using antibiotics unnecessarily over the last 20 years, right? And so we're finding out that we're creating superbugs. We're finding out that uh, when the patient really needs the antibiotics, we, 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 it's not working, right? And so we're having to go to these higher level antibiotics to treat the illnesses. I'll give you a perfect example. Otitis media, which is ear infection, right? 50% of them will go away without you doing anything and just watching the child, making sure you control the fever, right? And allowing the body to do what it does best, you know? But again, I cannot push that with every parent because it depends on the parent's level of comfort, right? So you have to weigh it on an individual level. In food, you'd see that the, um, the, the uh, food, um, the entity in charge of controlling um, the quality of food has started to monitor and reduce and, and curtail the use of antibiotics in livestock, in food, and all of that because of these major reasons. Thank you, very detailed. Thank you so much for your time. You. Richard Jones says their office is very clean, their staff uh -huh. is friendly. I can attest to that. Thank real, you. Real Thank quick, you. I, my daughter thinks we're on YouTube, not Facebook, so <laughs> I told her to give her a shout out. So we can say hello, Ellie. I love Hi, you. Ellie. Hi, Ellie. <laughs> it's Dr. Mombasa. <laughs> Mombasa. I'm Lion King because of his accent. So, yeah, Ellie, uh, Ellie loves you guys. So thank you so much. They're also on the cover of our publication, uh, MD Monthly, mdmonthly.com. Uh, uh, log on. Uh, you can uh, request our newsletter and everything else. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, um, keep, in, keep, in, uh, keep following us. If you have any more questions, continue asking. They'll be, go back to our site and engage back with you with anything else. I'll also, I'll also copy and paste their uh, phone number and location on the thread as well, too. But thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate thank you. Thank you. Thank Did you. I forget anything? We're good? No, we're good. I okay, think we're good. good. <laughs> we, I think we had, a lot, we had a lot of fun with this. All right, that's thank fun, you. too. Thank All you. Right. Thank Have you. Have a good evening. Good night. Good night.